So every year around this time, late June, I like to discuss with you guys some of my predictions or my expectations for the next 2K. And this year is no different. We're gonna keep with tradition. And this time around, I wanna share with you guys my predictions, my expectations for NBA 2K24. I do reserve the right to not be right about everything. So if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but that's what makes it fun. So let's dive into this. 2K usually releases the first full week of September on a Friday. This year, that is September 8th. Last year was September 9th. So I do expect a September 8th street day release, but obviously if you pre-order the game, you should get it a little bit early. Now the cover athlete is usually announced the first week of July used to be during the NBA Finals, but obviously things have changed over the years due to COVID. Last year, that was July 7th. So look for a first week of July announcement for the 2K cover athlete once again. But also keep in mind, last year we got the legend Michael Jordan edition on July 5th, two days earlier. So still look for that first week of July to get the cover athlete announcement for 2K24. Now, if I had to guess, I would say Kobe Bryant would have to be the NBA 2K24 cover athlete for the Legend Edition. Now I know recently he was the cover athlete for the 2K21 Mamba Forever Edition, but this is for the year 2024, 2K24, he wore jersey 24. They did it for Michael Jordan. Why wouldn't they do it for Kobe Bryant? Just feels right. If Kobe makes the cover, I predict, because I just don't see why not, that there will be a Kobe challenge mode where you'll have some of Kobe's greatest moments and you'll get a chance to do it the same way we did with the Jordan Challenge for 2K23. In season seven, they were giving out Kobe Bryant 24 wristbands and things like that, so it feels like 2K is already gearing in that direction. I won't be surprised if they do a rookie vet shared cover like they did for 2K21, where you had Damian Lillard as the vet cover and you had Zion Williamson, who was the hottest prospect coming out of college for that year. So if they do decide to go that route, I wouldn't be surprised if they go with Victor Wimbanyama and Jason Tatum. There's been some debate on whether or not Jason Tatum has done enough to grace the cover, but I just feel like he's probably the most marketable outside of someone like John Morant. To me, it should have been John Morant. This would have been his year, but his off the court antics have probably taken him out of that selection. You could make a case for LeBron James being the cover athlete considering how he broke the scoring record this year, but he was also the 2K19 anniversary edition cover athlete as well so that wasn't too long ago not sure if they're gonna go on that route and i wouldn't be surprised if jimmy butler made a cover i'm just not sure if he's as marketable as someone like jason tatum but again i would not be surprised jimmy butler he definitely would be a great cover athlete i think he would sell a lot of copies look for our first gameplay trailer the last friday of july last year that was july 29th this year it'll be july 28th if they push it back, look for it early August. The first Friday is August 4th. Last year, all the trailers fell on every Thursday in August. That was the Jordan Challenge, my NBA, my team, and my career. So if there is a Kobe Challenge, maybe they make that announcement August 11th, my NBA, August 18th, my team, August 25th, and my career mode, the announcement that we'll all be waiting for September 1st. Now those are just my predictions based on previous dates. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but definitely put those dates in your calendar anyway if you're trying to stay on top of things. Obviously, if you're not already subbed to my channel, sub here, you'll definitely get a lot of information coming from me directly. Now for my expectations. I always expect 2K to make gameplay improvements. There will always be a change to the dribble controls, and I definitely expect skill dunks to make a return, and I doubt this will be the last time we're seeing adrenaline boosts. They weren't received well initially, but whether you like them or not, it seems like a lot of people respect 2K's decision to go in that direction with those new adrenaline boosts. I expect improvements to shooting. There's been some complaints about shot timing, especially when defenders are really close to you. It like your window is smaller the closer they are to you and you have to release faster. It's like three different shot timing releases you have to do depending on where the defender is. I do expect some improvements in paint defense, and I do expect 2K to make some changes to how we steal the ball for 2K24, because out the gate, a lot of people felt 2K23, it was ridiculous. Maybe 2K already made those changes and they're just gonna carry that over for 2K24. I think there should be some improvements to defensive reactions to blocks and deflections. Too many times you get a block or deflection and the offense reacts to the loose ball faster than the defense. It's the defender's intention to block the shot or deflect the pass. 
And so that should always catch the offensive player off guard. He's not expecting, his intention is to dunk on you or his intention is to take a shot. He's not aware that he's gonna get blocked all the time. He's not aware that the ball's gonna get deflected while it's in midair. So the offense shouldn't be able to instantly recover on blocks and deflections as fast as they've been doing in the last couple 2Ks. I expect 2K to improve reach avoidance animations. If you're dribbling the ball up court and you have a high enough ball handle, you shouldn't have to fake pass or pump fake in order to protect the ball. I would like 2K to give us a visual representation for boosts like they used to do in the past because right now, when you buy boost, there's no way to see the actual precise value for that boost. We don't know if it's a plus one or a plus two or a plus four. Same thing for Gym Rat. That's not really an expectation or a prediction, just something I would like 2K to do since they haven't done it in so many years. I do expect 2K to continue to improve overall physics, especially on ball deflections. A lot of times when you strip the ball handler, the ball goes, it's like the ball's moving at 50 miles an hour and goes sailing out of bounds. Sometimes when you deflect the pass into passing lanes, it's leather against skin. The ball at times should just fall directly to your feet. I mean, it's not like you're, you're, you're punching the ball out of bounds, but far too many times you deflect the pass and it goes flying out of bounds and nobody can catch up to the ball. I predict a new city, a new design, and why wouldn't I? Every single year they make some improvements or some changes and I don't think that was gonna be any different this year for 2K24. If it was up to me, I would steer us in a different direction from the concrete jungle that we've seen in 2K21, 22, and 23. I didn't play 2K21 old gen as much because I went over to next gen as soon as it dropped, but 2K21 old gen had the beachfront. Remember, we was all like at the docks near a beach. I think the fans really like that. I wouldn't be surprised if 2K goes in that direction for 2K24. And they do go in this direction, I think they should make it more like a skate park just more speed friendly so that way you can traverse the, the environment a lot faster. You know, doing a lot of jumps and going down hills is always fun. Running into tables and benches and street lights was not fun at all. So remove all that stuff, make it like a skate park, make it fun where you can just go up and down hills, go really fast throughout the city to get to your next objective. Especially if you add that in for my career, that make things a lot more fun and interesting. Cause we all know that transportation prizes ain't going nowhere. I predict a new event center, or better yet, a new location. I think they should remove the boring gray backgrounds on the inside of the event center that didn't inspire anybody to wanna to come around for those events. If you're gonna host an event, inside that event is more important than the way it looks on the outside. 2K23 was really cool with the how the event center like transformed into this large building. But I think it's more important to make the inside jumping and more exciting and something to look forward to when you tell your friends, hey man, are y'all gonna be on 2K this weekend? Cause they got this event coming up. I think that should be the, the focus for the new event center. Bring it back outside. Have a day and night light cycle like we used to in the past. I would prefer a crowd over some fake AI guys playing in the background or some empty courts like we had in 2K23. I've been saying this all year, that's my prediction, but I also expect 2K to make a big change to the event center. I'm predicting and expecting a big change to the rec center. Take the rec center outside. We've been inside of a gym for the rec center for the last nine years. I think 5v5 outside would be a lot of fun to see. Gotta have them squads and random slots as well. I know some people think full squad shouldn't be in the rec and they should go play Team Pro-Am or something, but you don't get two times rep at Team Pro-Am. You get two times rep in the rec center. And me and my guys like to bring our new builds to the rec center. I just prefer to play rec than to play my career to work on my new build. Keep that in mind for some of you guys that have been giving me that work when I'm in the rec center on a new build. Add an endorsement level for a recommended player voting system. This way at the end of randoms games, you can keep it positive by endorsing certain players that were on your team that played really well. The more you get endorsed for the rec, the higher your endorsement level, which means you play with better players on a higher level. If you don't get endorsed often, then your endorsement level remains low and you continue to play with lower quality players. And 2K could do matchmaking with the average endorsement level rating for the entire team to match up the teams. And this will incentivize people to play better or not necessarily throw games on purpose. I also think 2K should put in a mercy rule for whenever you're blowing a team out by 30 points. You already have it in my career mode where we can actually quit a game and go to the bench if we're up by 25 points and still collect VC 
why not do that for the wreck too? You're just kind of wasting time after a while. Did you guys realize in 2K23 we had no rival day? I expect the spirit of affiliation competition to return for 2K24. 2K23 was definitely the most expensive 2K we've ever played. And people are already joking right now that 2K24's cover athlete is just gonna be a VC symbol. I don't know, lower the prices, people make more builds, and we don't feel as terrible when we make a bad build. And making new builds makes you less likely to stop playing 2K. So making new builds brings you back, can only do that if you lower the prices on builds. I expect 2K to make new incentives for beating the streaks. Reward victors who take down five or more game win streaks. Two times rep or double the VC if it's more than a 10 game win streak. For that matter, reward the streakers two times rep or double the VC for getting higher than a 10 game win streak. This will keep the challenges coming back to play rather than running away. You won't need a logo to get continuous games, you just need the streak. And I expect 2K to improve on the ability to edit your badge loadout in between matches. You should be able to edit your badges, add attribute points, change your takeovers, adjust your animations, all in between matches. Without having to get off the got next and while your rep is being tallied, the progression tally can be done in the background. 2K already does this when a full team quits in the rec center. You have like maybe 10 seconds to do it on the park if a team is waiting on the got next, but I'm talking about you should have ample time right after the game ends to make those adjustments. You shouldn't have to exit the rec center locker room or the event center lobbies in order to make those kind of changes. So anyways guys, those are my predictions and my expectations for NBA 2K24. Kind of a predict list, wish list. Let me know in the comment section below, what are some of the changes you guys expect 2K to make for 2K24? As always, smack that like and subscribe, click the bell for notifications, stay tuned for more, and I'll see you guys in the next one.